Hey, what's up guys? It's Miss Vosk. I'm here at the Immersion Mining Farm Shed, and today we are going to do a deployment for our fog hashing immersion setup. Um, but first, we have to prep the miners. So there's a couple things that goes into prepping miners before you immerse them. Uh, that includes taking off the fans, cleaning them, flashing them with a uh, new firmware so that they can go into immersion mode when they're put into the immersion setup. Um, and then fog caching has these cool nifty handles uh, that you can add so that it's easier to, to dunk and take the miners in and out. So we're gonna go ahead and run through that today. Uh, if you're not familiar with immersion mining, it's very similar to air-cooled mining, except it's in liquid. So a couple pros and cons about that. Immersion mining, it's easier to regulate temperatures. You can overclock miners a lot more. Um, we will not be overclocking them uh, just because of power capacity mostly, but um, it is an option. Uh, miners tend to last longer when they are immersed because they can be at lower temperatures um, and it's just easier to keep them cooler. A couple of cons is that there is a little bit more prep and setup for the actual immersion setup. You have your dry cooler, your tank, uh, the hoses, uh, there's definitely some different prep that we'll run through today when it comes to immersing them. Um, and then there's just the dielectric fluid and that is a cool thing to watch but it's a little bit messy. So we're going to go ahead and prep these miners. So I can't just flash these while they're running because uh, basically long story short everything is at capacity. So. Some of the miners that are down, we're taking and we're putting them here on the test bench and we're going to go and flash uh, brains onto them and we're going to use the immersion option, which basically acts as a fan spoofer so that they can run in liquid because uh, they have a safety mechanism that will stop them, that will turn them off if they don't detect the fans running. Uh, I made a mistake and I didn't order more ethernet cables. Uh, so right now I'm taking them out of uh, the pod over here uh, Just because I have a bunch of spares, but uh, th these are like the worst ethernet cables in the world I'll, I'll post a link of where I bought these. Uh, yeah, if you care about your fingers never buy them <clears throat> But yeah, basically half the pods down uh, so we're gonna move the liquid cooling Ethernet switch is up there. And actually, that guy right there just got himself brains. Got some brains, huh? All right, so we're working on getting brains on onto all of these miners so we can dunk them, right? It's nice and warm in here. It's the only warm place out here. So this is Brains Toolbox. Brains Toolbox is now available on every platform. Super freaking cool. I couldn't be more stoked about it cuz I'm a Mac guy. This is basically a way to remotely install brains onto your rigs, right? So brains, it's, and you can see it's, you know, starting to install. Brains is aftermarket firmware, it has auto tuning. Uh, it's, any way you look at it, it's better than the stock Bitmain firmware. All right, so how do you really install the Brains firmware, right? It's gotten so much easier with the release of their toolbox. I created a tutorial video with elaborate details, right? It's over 30 freaking minutes if you want to hear everything I can think of when it comes to this stuff. Uh, so I'll link that out in the video description below, but let me give you a quick crash course, right? On if you're like, dude, just tell me how to do this in a couple minutes. Okay, so we head over to brains.com slash toolbox. We download the software. It's available for every OS. Cool. We complete the install, right? You fire it up, it opens terminal, and then it can scan your network and find your miners. If for some reason it's not finding your miners, log into your router or use an IP scanner, get the exact IP addresses of the miner or miners you're looking for, and just type them in. So you can see I type one in right here, and it takes me right to it, searches, hits real quick. And then I see that it can install brains on this. You have to make sure your control board works with brains. It most likely does. Uh, but on the chance that it does not, then, well, that's why brains made their new control board. So you can go buy one of those, or you can buy one of the other Ant Miner 
control boards and swap it on there. All these miners are essentially the same other than uh, maybe differences in control boards. So I'm gonna assume that it works on your miner and most likely it does. Uh, so you click it, you click install, and then you go get a glass of water, you come back and it's been installed. Then you can, and this is a nice convenient feature, you literally just click it. You click the IP address and it will open the miner. You punch in your login and your password. By default, that's gonna be root, root. Uh, it will keep your mining pool information in here uh, that the miner previously had. So if it's already set up mining and good to go beforehand, well then you should be good to go. And uh, remember, you can always revert to the stock's uh, firmware or you know, throw another control board on there or something. Like there's even other aftermarket control boards other than brains like the Epic board. Uh, so we get all of our ant miner parts from Altair. Uh, he's been incredible to work with cool guy good guy. He's in the US So like if you need a control board quick go grab it from there punch in the code Voscoin to save some coin We also love his mining PDUs with our code at about a, you get them PDUs for about a hundred bucks shipped um, And they're the cheapest PDU in the mining game and they're small They got good form factor and they give you good data So with all that said right we're in here the miners working miners running and then I go down to the temperature and fan area and I click immersion mode I click that on and make sure you understand right you don't you don't want to test this out that uh, when you click this on and if you take the fans off, it needs to be in immersion fluid. Okay, it needs to be in liquid. It needs to have something freaking cooling it very seriously. Um, if you click the immersion mode on and the fans are still on, that's fine, it'll work. That's what I did in my testing. I clicked immersion mode on and the fans are still on and it looks good, it's still mining. All right, cool, turn it off. I take the fans off and I dunk them in the immersion pods. That's your crash course on brains. It will auto tune. You can pick a hash rate target or a power target. I underclock most of my Bitcoin miners. So I, you, you know, I look at my older S19 J Pro 104 tera hash miners. I go in their settings and I say, okay, 2,200 watts. That's all you guys get. It increases the efficiency. It increases my runway with these miners. Um, and it just makes sense for me with my Bitcoin mining operation at my electricity rate. So there it is. Crash course, brains, firmware, mining online operation it's no secret i love mining which naturally means that i love or at least need mining rigs that's where asic marketplace comes in they sell all different types of cryptocurrency mining rigs they get them to me quickly which makes the difference with my roi and you know what else helps the ROI? If you punch in the code VOSCOIN to save some coin the next time you order a miner from them. So now we're gonna test some of the miners um, just after we flash brains onto it. Um, and the reason you wanna do this before you take the fans off is because when you do testing, you don't want, um, basically you don't want it to burn itself out. Um, so the fans are still on. Um, after we test it, we're gonna remove these fans um, like Voss said, basically the flashing will think that, make it think that there's fans on it. So when it gets immersed, then uh, it won't need those fans. So we're gonna remove the front ones and the back ones. All right, so now we're gonna grab the S19 XP. That one we have flash brains on and we did some testing. So now we can turn it off and we'll take the fans off and move it to emergent mode and then it will be ready to get dumped. All right, now that we've tested our miners, we're gonna go ahead and remove the fans, the front and the back. Um, so the intake and the outtake fans. So in order to do that, we will need to remove a couple screws. So there's actually a lot of screws around the base, um, but if you remove this one screw here, just loosen it just a little bit. There's a button here and you push it and it'll come up. So you don't have to remove all of them, just that one. So on the inside here, we're at the back of the miner now, um, you'll see these multicolored wires. You'll see these multicolored wires. So those are our fans. So a couple of things you'll want to cut. So I just have a little vice, kind of mini vice thing 
clipper. So I'm going to remove the zip ties that are holding these all together. So there's one there, one there. That one's good. And then we'll also see a little one up here. So you'll want to pull these out from the control board here, and that should be a pretty easy pull out. Um, don't force it, don't try to bend it or anything because there's little pins in there. You don't want to damage it. So we pull those out. We got our front fans there, our back fans here. In order to get them out on the back here, there's two screws you'll need to unscrew. Um, personally, I'm just using a hand screwdriver um, here. Power tools are like you can use them with this but these screws are super like malleable like they're really easy to strip um, so because we're gonna be putting these screws back on I just want to make sure they're good to go so then this part will just kind of pop off a little bit and we can pull these out there we go. I'm just gonna put these screws back on. And then these screws are a little bit more sturdy. Um, so we'll go ahead and remove those. You just really need to pull them out just a little bit. They're long screws, but most of them are just in the fan itself. So we'll loosen those. We've got the back outtake fans done. Um, if you'll notice in our DCX video, we removed these plates. That be, that's because the DCX um, immersion setup had a plate that kind of held them all at the bottom, and then you would put two next to each other, and they were all just kind of connected to that. For fog hashing, I don't believe we have a plate like that, so I'm just going to leave these on here now. Um, but we'll, we'll still go over here and grab the front fans. So same thing here, we have our fans here. Um, I will need to loosen this one screw here just to let it come out. Again, I'm gonna use a hand screwdriver here because I hate these screws. So we'll just slide that up a little bit just to get the fan wire out. Then we'll put it back. And again, we will be taking off oh, these guys. So those are now off, so we've got our um, front fans off, our back fans off, and then we're just gonna slide this plate back on here. And this will pop right back in. So after we remove the fans on the miners, before we dunk them, we also wanna clean them a little bit. So a lot of these miners were out in the digital shovel um, so they've had some exposure to like outdoor air and stuff. We have filters, but some stuff still gets in. Um, so some of these miners have like a little dust or dirt or even some bugs in there. Um, so we'll just take this shop vac and we will just kind of use that to blow out some air, blow through the, the machine and try to get some of the, the dirt and dust and stuff out of it. Um, I've heard it's not recommended to use compressed air on these because um, it can have some moisture within it um, when you use it. Um, so we'll be using a shop pack for that part. So 
So one cool thing about the fog hashing unit is that it comes with these little handles. Um, and these handles go into the miner at these two spots. Um, you just put them in right where we took out those fans and those screw locations. And this purpose, I just reuse the fan screws. Um, so I have those there. This is just a simple way to help you kind of lift it, the miners in and out of the immersion fluid. They get really heavy, so um, that's super helpful. The only thing I found is this is an S19XP. These screws fit perfectly fine. You can see there's space and clearance with the hash board and the heat sinks. In the S19J Pro model though, the heat sinks sit much closer to this outside fan. Um, and so the screws that go originally with the fans don't fit. Um, they'll actually bump up and hit that heat sink. So I need to either find different screw sizes for those or uh, just pass on the handles on those. Um, they did also work on the S19K Pro over there. So we'll just need to figure out something else for the S19J Pro. All right, so I was able to find a screw that we can use that will work on the S19J Pros. Um, we just happen to have a like metric assorted nuts and bolts thing. So these are the ones I'm using. So we're gonna head over and get the last one installed. Alright guys, so we have prepped the miners. They are ready for immersion into our fog hashing machine. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that video. Um, but just a quick recap, we ran through flashing brains firmware onto the machines. Um, we added, or we removed fans. We cleaned them, uh, the miners, before they go in. And then we added handles so they'll be easy to be lifted in and out of the tank. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, let us know down in the comments.